Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today is just gonna be a quick video where I show how to create the Dodge traffic effect inside of After Effects. This one can actually be made inside of Premiere Pro as well, but I decided to use After Effects since there's some masking involved and the masking tools inside of Premiere aren't as good as they are in After Effects. But if you only have Premiere Pro and you wanna create this effect, it's totally possible. Just follow the same techniques that I'm about to show you. But all right, with that being said, let's jump right into it and I'll start off by showing you all the footage that I had to shoot for this effect. For this effect, I filmed two separate shots. The first one was of a street and I had the camera locked off on a tripod. I left the camera recording and let a few cars drive by. Then after there was no more traffic and the road was clear, I ran through the street, dodging imaginary traffic, looking like a madman freaking out my neighbors. And the second shot I recorded was one with handheld motion to it. This didn't have to be anything special because I'm only using this footage to add some handheld motion to the effect later. But okay, so that's it for the footage. Now let's jump inside of After Effects. So inside of After Effects, I have my footage imported and my Dodge Traffic composition created. First thing that I'll do is go through and break this clip up into five separate parts. Four of those parts are going to be of cars driving by, and the fifth part is of me running through the street acting like I'm dodging the traffic. After I had those broken up, I stacked my footage like this. I put the footage layer of me dodging the traffic on the bottom and stacked all four of the car footage layers on top of that. Then I selected all the car footage layers hit T on the keyboard to bring up the opacity and brought the opacity down to 50%. I did this so I was able to see what I'm doing while I slide the car footage layers around so that I can time them up. As you can see here, I timed up the car one layer so that it looks like it's nearly missing me and I'm jumping back onto the sidewalk, dodging that car. And I'll go through and do the same thing with the other cars, timing them up to make it look like they're almost hitting me. And then after I'm done timing those up, I can bring the opacity back up to 100% for all of these layers. Next thing I have to do is create a mask on each one of the cars while they're on screen. So I'll select my car one layer, hit G on the keyboard to bring up the pen tool, and create a mask around the car. I also made sure the shadow that the car was casting on the ground was inside of the mask as well. After I'm done with my mask, I'll hit M on the keyboard to bring up the mask path, hit the stopwatch, and went through repositioning this mask, making sure it was over the car for every frame that it's on screen. I also hit F on the keyboard to bring up the mask feather and increase that to about 10. And I went through and did the same thing for the other three car footage layers. For two of the car layers, I want it to look like my body's in front of the car and that the car is driving behind me as I'm running past it. And that's for car number two right here and car number four. As you can see, my body is disappearing behind these cars. So I need to adjust that. I'll start with car number two. I'll bring the time indicator to the point in the footage right when my body starts going behind the car. Then I'll select the footage layer of me dodging the traffic and I'll duplicate that. I'll trim that duplicated layer to start right at the time indicator and then go forward a few frames until my body's not behind the car anymore and then trim it to end at that point. And I'll take that duplicated layer and stack it above the car two layer. Then I'll make sure I have that duplicated layer selected, hit G on the keyboard to bring up the pen tool and create a mask around my body. And then I'll go through and animate this mask over my body for every frame that I want to be in front of the car. There are a few frames where my arm created a hole inside of the mask. As you can see right here, the car is disappearing inside of that hole. So to fix this, I'll make sure that duplicated layer is selected and I'll create another mask, but this time inside of the hole that my arm is creating. And then I'll hit M on the keyboard to bring up those masks and I'll change mask two from add to subtract. And now you can see the car through that mask and I'll just animate this mask to move for those few frames that it's on screen. I also increased the feather on both of these masks to around two. And then I did the same thing for car number four, duplicated the footage of me dodging traffic, trimmed it down and brought it above the car four layer and did the same thing with masking around my body. Also try to use cars that have tinted windows and that those windows are rolled up. Cause as you can see right here, if you can see through those windows, that'll look like you're disappearing behind the car. This was only on screen for one frame, so I just left it. I just wanted to give you a heads up to make things easier. And last thing I'm gonna do is add some handheld motion to this effect. And I do that by selecting all of my footage, right clicking and pre-composing them together. Then I'll open up that composition and bring in the handheld footage that I was talking about earlier. And I'll make sure to stack this on top of all the layers inside of that composition. Then I'll come back into the Dodge Traffic Comp and add Warp Stabilizer to the Dodge Traffic Handheld Composition. And I'll change the result to No Motion and the method to Position, Scale, and Rotation. After that's done analyzing, I'll go into the Dodge Traffic Handheld Composition and delete the footage with the handheld motion. And now when I go into the Dodge Traffic Composition and play that back, you can see that the motion from that handheld clip was applied to the Dodge Traffic Handheld Composition. For those of you who have seen my videos before, you know that this is my favorite way to add handheld motion to my shots. It's just really easy and adds a very realistic handheld look to your footage. Adding handheld motion to your effects always makes them look more realistic rather than it just being a boring locked off shot on a tripod. But okay, that's it. I just need to add some sound effects and color grading and I have my final effect.
All right, guys, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Consider subscribing right here if you haven't already. And if you're interested in seeing some more behind the scenes videos, follow me on Instagram. It's just at Brandon Fate. I only have like 300 followers right now, and that's because I post once like every six months. But I'm going to be changing that and be posting a lot of stories and more behind the scenes posts. So if you guys are interested in that, go ahead and follow me on Instagram. But all right, guys, that's it. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you next time.